taken from the Ultimate Killer Collection, by Stuart Dandel. Martha Rendell Not much is known about Martha Rendell's early life, other than she was born on the 10th of August, 1871, and she left home at the age of 16. During her teenage years she was known to be sexually promiscuous, leading to three illegitimate children who were born in quick succession. This would put her firmly on the periphery of society at the time and she was a social outsider. That was until she met the man she wanted to be with, in the 1890s, the only problem being, he was already married. Thomas Nichols Morris was the man that Rendell desired, though he lived with his wife and their nine children. In the year of 1900, Thomas Morris and his family headed for Perth, where he had just gained employment. The family were moving for other reasons also, as his affair with Rendell was making the rounds in Adelaide, and during the era, this would cause great scandal and shame. Undeterred however, Martha Rendell ditched her three illegitimate children in Adelaide, and followed the Morris family to Perth. Considering the journey was 1,400 miles and there was no transportation system in the day, this was quite some undertaking. It is not known how Martha covered the distance. Whilst in Perth, Thomas Morris left his wife and Martha Rendell moved in, with Morris taking full custody of five children. While the charade was playing out, the children were instructed to call Martha Rendell, mother. It has been said that Martha Rendell, beat the Morris children regularly and with scant regard for their safety, once striking Annie so hard, that she could not walk afterwards. Harry Mann who was the arresting officer when Rendell came in for questioning stated, she delighted in seeing her victims writhe in agony, and from it derived sexual satisfaction. Seven-year-old Annie was also the first to fall ill, and it is supposed that Rendell placed something in the children's food to make them unwell. Then she could save the day by providing an adequate treatment. To clear Annie's sore throat, Rendell began swabbing the back of it with hydrochloric acid, a treatment for diphtheria at the time. As the acid began to take effect it would cause inflammation, making it impossible for Annie to eat or drink. She eventually succumbed to her illness on the 28th of July, 1907. Dr. Cuthbert issued the child's death certificate, stating cause of death as diphtheria. Next to fall ill was the youngest child, Olive. The five-year-old received the same treatment for sore throat from Rendell, and on the 6th of October, 1907, she died just like her sister previously. Once again Dr. Cuthbert was called to issue a certificate of death, and once again he stated it was diphtheria. Fourteen-year-old Arthur was the next one to fall ill, but being an adolescent, he held out for longer. It wasn't until October 6, 1908, that his body eventually gave up and he perished like his siblings. After this death, Dr. Cuthbert asked the family if he could perform an autopsy. With permission given on the understanding that Martha Rendell be present, the procedure was carried out, but no incriminating evidence was to be found. As the new year rolled on to April of 1909, Martha Rendell moved on to a new victim. This time George got a sore throat after drinking a cup of tea that Rendell had prepared. When Rendell coated his tonsils with her mixture, the frightened boy bolted and ran to his mother's new home. This would be the last attempt of murder by Martha Rendell. Upon noticing that George had disappeared, neighbors began to inquire as to his whereabouts, with his father stating that he was unsure. Perturbed by this, the neighbors contacted local law enforcement and Inspector Harry Mann began to make inquiries. Whilst carrying out his investigation, Mann encountered several individuals who described the children having their throats painted and that the children appeared pained throughout, but Randall never showed any concern. He also spoke to one neighbor who stated that he had seen Randall rocking back and forth in pleasure, as her victims screamed in pain before her. A ghastly sight if one cares to imagine it. After speaking with the neighbors, Harry Mann tracked down George 
who told him that he had run away from home as his stepmother was trying to kill him. He then went on to explain the applications of spirits of salts that Randall had applied to the Morris children, spirits of salts is otherwise known as hydrochloric acid. Further investigations proved that Randall had bought massive quantities of spirits of salts around the time of the children's deaths, but she had purchased none since. The only problem for man was, none of the physicians when asked, could accurately say what effect the swabbing may have had on the children. On the 3rd of July, 1909, the Morris children's bodies were exhumed, and all were found to have traces of hydrochloric acid on their throat tissue. Harry Mann then charged Martha Rendell and Thomas Morris, with murder. Martha Rendell protested her innocence, maintaining that she was treating the children for diphtheria. When the case came to trial, Thomas Morse was acquitted under the pretense that he had not known about the murders, even though he had bought the spirits of salts. He was said to also be unaware of the effect of such applications. Martha Rendell on the other hand, was found guilty of willful murder and sentenced to death. The judge went on to call her a moral deformity. Martha Rendell was hanged on 6 October, 1909, at Fremantle Prison. She was then interred in the Fremantle Cemetery, where Eric Edgar Cook was buried in the same grave many years later. Martha Rendell was the last woman executed in the state of Western Australia. Although Martha Rendell certainly applied the hydrochloric acid to the children's throats, there are still some who protest her innocence, due to her believing that it was in fact, medicine.